The following is a fan-based review. All materials discussed are property of Toei Inc., Bandai, and Saban Entertainment. Hello, Mina-san. How y'all doing today? It's 2017. Thank fucking Christ. We dude. made it. No one else died. I'm going to be so upset if somebody else does die between now and the actual start of the year. We've got about 12, 12 hours. hours so. Yeah. 2017! Yay! We've made it, mostly. Did we, though? Yeah, mostly. We're mostly. alive, that counts. Fair enough. But yes, welcome to... The new... first episode of the year. We didn't shut the channel down. <laughs> yes. No one, and no one shut us down. Yes. Very thankful. Tell me, don't look at me. Um, but yeah, episode 22. Woo! So excited for this one. We're back to Super Sentai with... Gekiso Sentai! Ka-ha! So excited for this one. Let's get this over with. I love this show. Eh. This show was great. It's all right. I it cracked me up so hard. I was Marcus on this one. No, no matter what, my favorite moment is still that one episode that we watched in college with the. <laughs> that happened extremely early on too. It, <laughs> nothing. I'm just sorry. That was just hysterical to me. It, it, it just ramped up from there. It did though. <clears throat> all right. Now, per usual, let's go ahead and start with the beginning because this show has two intros. Hmm. Um, after... And here, I thought Ghostbusters was the first one to do this. Yep. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, the first one, I didn't mind the first intro that much. It wasn't yeah. bad. Um, it fit the tone of the show. Yeah. Really, really well. Um, and in episode 14, when they brought in that second intro, when it goes full Axel, I really enjoyed that one. Yeah. I thought it was a lot of fun. It's just like, they just basically made a remix of the original one and just ramped it up from there and put a lot more bombasticness into the actual song. Mm. Great song. Uh, the ending just fit the entire thing because it was just yes. him and a go-kart race. It was, yep. ma- it was a Mario Kart song. Yes. And, oh, uh, it was fun. I, it was. Like, I like the ending more than the uh, opening. For this yeah, one. me too. Eh, I'm a little bit of the opposite, but I, I understand. It's just like, these things do very well at just presenting the show for what it was. Very and true. That, that's now true. let's talk about the first episode. The first episode is one of the most hilarious openings I've ever seen because the it entire sets the it sets the tone for the rest of the show very well. Yeah, yeah. you know exactly what you're in for from from day one, it's whether like, you like it or not. The funniest thing is though is because they sort of know that where they get their powers from is complete bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> car constellations, car magic, car magic, <laughs> and car constellations, <laughs> and the fact like... that they're tricked into being yes, the yes, Dap is an asshole, and I love it. It was just like, you legitimately just got tricked. He pretends to die. Yes. And they're like, we'll avenge him and become the car rangers. And then he's like, I'm fine. Suck it. <laughs> <laughs> you can't take him off, by the way. You're screwed. Yeah. I-, I love that first scene where um like he breaks in two because they work at a auto shop. And Fitting. he like breaks in there and like, they try to hide from him because they don't want to have anything to do with all of this. <laughs> <laughs> so they try to I hide. need warriors. Fuck that. <laughs> Nope. <laughs> they basically just dip out, and it's great. I love the beginning of this show. Mm-hmm. It was pretty it's... fucking fun. It was fun the second time around. Yeah. Now yeah. that I was expecting it, I did not like the show. I especially love the. I, sp- I especially love the intro to our group of villains. <laughs> they're and all Bozak. Bozak. They're, they're just a the, bunch... in, the intergalactic mm. biker gang, it and is... they're a bunch of perverts <laughs> and dumbasses. The, yeah, phrase, that too. the phrase "ass licking." Is used in the first episode. Yeah, it really is. And because we get in- that's introduced to basically like something you hear every day. The main people, uh, Gynamo, mm-hmm. uh, Zonetto, uh, Grotch, and the other one whose name I can't remember. <laughs> the other one. What was it? The other one. Uh, uh, Gynamo, Zonetto. Zomoda. Yeah. He was the one with the cards and the weird face. <laughs> they all had weird faces. But yeah, it's like the first episode of this show. We do get introduced in the suits. As I said, I don't like lips, but I really like the fact that they have a lot of intricacies in the actual helmet. But you need lips because how else is Zonet going to kiss Red Racer? You're jumping ahead. <laughs> yeah, you are. I but, don't care. But I do like the design of this of these suits. They are The intricacy does work in this case. Especially on the helmet. It's yeah. just like you have helmet lights... Also, just uh, just this is just a Super Sentai thing in general. Green from this season and O-Green from last season had the same exact shape on their helmet. Hmm. Huh. 
I never noticed that. It's the, I think it's the only time that's happened so far because they both. I mean, have pink is real close too. Yeah, except for that little dip in the. Yeah, she doesn't like has an actual heart, but it's like green from this and last season both have squares. Rectangles. And all squares are circles. <laughs> all these squares make a circle. <laughs> all these squares make a circle. Props to anybody in the comments who can name that reference. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, episode, uh, we're just going to go ahead and just. Um, oh. I like, this is just a thing about the 90s in your own. A lot of them end up getting individual weapons. Yep. Mm. And this is the funniest one by far. Because it forms a car, a very small car. It, an it, RC car. It, it, that explodes, doesn't it? Yes. I wonder if that RC car was ever sold as a toy. I never saw it. Uh, I think the individual weapons were. They, the individual weapons were, but I don't think they no, ever used this in Power Rangers Turbo. I don't think they did. No, but, that'd be too silly for them. <laughs> But did I mean, you not watch Turbo? I was about to say Turbo is just a thing in general, but we'll do that in the comparison. Uh, but you yeah, know I, what I, mean. I like the fact that we are sticking with the uh, individual weapons again this time. I like the I also, but even with I like the individual weapon designs because those are cool. I like the team weapons, the blasters and the swords, especially because mm-hmm. of the engine look. I'm, Speaking of which, there was a thing in this that actually has a connection to Bioman because of those swords. Really? Uh, because these swords can become the ranger's color mm-hmm. like they couldn't bio man yeah. i don't think they really they don't really end up doing that like at all and that was just a, uh, one thing i noticed because it happens in a later episode uh but i really like the fact that it's sort of a harkening back to that show because you really don't hear a lot about and don't forget turbo ranger. ranger yes this show is a gigantic parody <laughs> we uh, have to kind of talk about that mm-hmm. don't we turbo ranger was a terrible show uh only the first how many was, episodes have you seen of it uh 10 and they're all boring as hell. <laughs> and there are fairies involved. Yes, there. Was well, that the first ever high school? Yeah, Sentai. Uh, but and it shows. Yeah, it, it's it's a really really bad boring show. But they, this Carter is a parody of uh, 1989, 1989 Turbo Ranger, and. They just do it so much better. They do the car thing so much better. It just mm. works because it, it's all... They me. understand how nonsensical it really is, yeah. and they just run with it. it it's, just, it's just hilarious. Um, episode 4 and 5, we end up getting introduced to their mech. Which I do cars. love their mech. I really like it. I remember having the, to- like the toy as a kid. It is really simple, it really works, and it looks so cool. Yeah. It's like, this is how a car one should look. Not like the one in Turbo Ranger where the head was way too small. But this Let's one be real, all small. the ones from back then, were, were their heads were way too small. Not all of them. No, Yeah, not all of them. Most of them. Yeah. But this one just looks really good. Uh, especially because I really, really like this finisher. Oh, the... The spinning... Yeah. Uh, Geki so giddy. But it, it just looks good. Geki, 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 Geki. It, it, it it's a really really good mech especially for a first mech because they usually save like a lot of the things for the second one mm-hmm. but this mech and the second one that we end up getting into later uh, I'll bring it up a little bit more uh, towards after we end up getting introduced to the second mech but there's something sort of special with the with this series on a couple of levels the only like if I had to complain about something is the fact that yellow and green have the exact same color Green's is a van. Hers is a doom buggy. It's pretty much the exact same design. <laughs> the only difference is the hood is a little longer on yellows. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, here's the thing about this show. And I'll bring this up a little bit more later as well. This show is extremely aware of itself. Yes. Because they love to break tropes. Yep. <laughs> and, the, and the fourth wall. Yes. The fourth wall, there is no fourth wall on this show half the time. Is basically like just watching a much more toned down version of Deadpool, <laughs> which is unfortunate. Yes. Um, let's go ahead and get on to episode twelve uh, because this is the episode where we get to, uh, introduced to Signal Man. Yay! Uh, a hilarious. I love Signal Man. Hilarious character. But I gotta ask you, Marcus, do we have his permission? We do have his permission. So awesome. I'm ask him first. He is. He tries to be. He tries so hard to be the straight man, mm-hmm. and he can't, can't be. Because he, just, he like, knows he's a doofus. Yes. That is a good word. I still <laughs> love, um, because, you know, the we have talked about this before in a roll call video, but they do have a roll call, and there's, uh, the car do have a roll call, and there's one <laughs> scene where they do the roll call, and the signal man, like, walks in, and then he sees it going like this, so he goes, 
<laughs> he was J before J. One of, one of my favorite Signal Man moments is uh, the two galactic cars that are racing on the social. When he sees them fly over, he goes, Wait, you don't have a. Oh, wait, the sky's not my jurisdiction. <laughs> Silly me. Carry on, friends. <laughs> um, episode 15. This actually ends up starting a very, very interesting subplot. Oh, well, actually. Before we get to episode 15, 13, that's when we get introduced to Cyrender, uh, Signal Man's mech. Mm-hmm. This mech is the inspiration for Decker Ranger. Obviously. <laughs> mm-hmm. Couldn't I, I can see that. Yeah. Like, not in the, like, the one car formation, but, like, once it stands up. Yeah. And, like, especially the gun and everything. Uh, it's basically, you know, it's a police uh, mech before we actually end up getting Before the police actual mech. police mech. Yeah. Uh, but it, it still looks good. It does. Um, mm-hmm. Episode 15, this is when we end up getting introduced to, like, the subplot between Zonette and Red Racer slash Kinsuke. I can honestly say this, and this it hurts me. where my kiss me. comment from earlier comes in. Yeah, I can honestly say this, and it hurts me a little bit. I liked that subplot. <laughs> I did, too. Yeah, it was actually How really much did that hurt you? A little bit, but it's like, it worked, because the characters did it so yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. It, it, like, it I'm not feel... disagreeing with you. I'm just saying it's just so weird to hear you say that. Yeah, because it opens up and she's dreaming about marrying him. She but... goes and observes him on the battlefield, and yeah. she's like, "Oh, he's so sexy." But it's like the best. And then thing she about sees him out of suit, and she's like, "Oh God, who the hell are you?" No, the, the best thing about this is the fact that whenever they end up seeing like the actual car rangers out of suit, wherever they are before mm. the car rangers show up, it's like, "Hey, get out of here, unremarkable civilian." <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it's just um this starts out the the love story between Zonet and Red Racer and it's really well done throughout the rest of the show. Mm-hmm. It doesn't feel forced because there's an actual build up. Yes. Yeah. And that makes it like the best thing about the it's show. It's also funny. Yes. <laughs> it's really hilarious. Um but it, it's really well done. It, they don't really end up doing much like it's a thing that as I said it builds up over the season itself and it, it just makes it great. Uh episode 16 we get introduced to instructor Chihaika. <laughs> <laughs> I love his laugh. His <laughs> laugh is yeah. the best thing ever. Rich, 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 rich. <laughs> I love Rich Haika. Because he's so much. You all right there, Matt? I have so many feelings. It's so Aww. good. I love because his first plan ends up uh, failing. And he ends up trying to charge Biker Gang. <laughs> and so he has to keep taking off zeros. And then he, like, guide him. I was like, you do it for free. How <laughs> do you do this for no money whatsoever? Uh, I love it. Like his introduction, like the next couple episodes of just him being uh, trying to be so smart, but constantly getting fooled by uh, the Car Rangers and constantly, you know, getting jipped out of his money. Mm-hmm. It's like I-, I love it. It's really, really funny. Um, we're gonna go ahead and skip episode nineteen because that's that's more of the uh, love story. But this one is just like. Kiyosuke ends up rejecting Zanet the first time because of the fact that they're on two different sides. Right. And this time, it's like, she ends up trying to fight her feelings for him so much throughout the rest of the season, but it doesn't really end up working. And Kiyosuke likes her back. And it's like this whole thing where there's this whole bunch of miscommunication because mm. she's in love with Red Racer, mm. not Kiyosuke. She thinks he looks like a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> it's semi-accurate, I guess you yeah. could say. Uh, episode 20... That's when we get, end up getting introduced to the two cars, the dragon and the Pegasus. Uh, there's... Which I really like those. Yes. Yeah, they're pretty cool. Uh, I really like. I have the I have the the turbo versions of the toys when no. I was a kid. I had most of the turbo show when I was a kid. Uh, Weird. It was you know it's they're good cars. They're they're obviously there to sell toys. Mm. Oh, that was a. They're parent. totally there to sell toys. That was a parent. But there's this one scene. It's like at the end of the episode after they actually you know get them like. Tame the mech. After red and blue, tame them. Yeah. Uh, You're letting me ride you? Yay! Blue, yellow, and green are in, you know, blue's truck. And there's a cardboard cutout of <laughs> red and pink in the Pegasus vehicle. <laughs> Just a cardboard cutout. I never noticed that. <laughs> and I'm sitting here like, I don't even miss that. <laughs> That's awful. <laughs> it's so good. That's great. Because this show knows it's bullshit. Uh-huh. And that makes it that much funnier. Um... Episode 25, this is when we end up getting introduced to someone who never makes an appearance in the American version. Uh, Radiata Fan Belt. White Racer. Who turns out is Zonet's sister. Um, 
she exists. <laughs> what else she, can you she, say? She is becoming a lot more important later on because she does help them fight near the end. Yeah. yeah. Interesting about interesting thing about her, the first time she shows up and the next time and every other time after that, the first time she shows up, she played by one actress. Every other time after that, she's played by a different actress. Mm. Awkward. <laughs> I'm just like, I don't know what happened behind the scenes. I mean, technically the same thing happened with Turbo. Yeah. Well, yeah. But the <laughs> thing is, didn't they kind of explained it in Turbo. But we'll talk well, about no, that. No, the later. actress was pregnant. So oh, she yeah. had to Oh, uh, that, so oh yeah. yeah. Um... Skip on over to episode 28. Sigdomen ends up leaving for a bit uh, to go spend time because he lives Is in this the planet. before or after the Sentai almost gets baked into a giant pizza? No, you were not escaping this. I don't even know what you're talking about. But Sigdomen ends up going back I to do his home planet. Uh, his home planet's name is Police. <laughs> this show is not subtle. No. <laughs> he has a son and a wife. He has a family there. And he that looks just like him. him. Yeah. And he wants to go back and spend time with them. And I'm just like... That's legit. I get that. You can't You can't be mad at that. He's like, I have a wife and kid to go home to. Then you're like, but, okay, yeah. Okay. No, we can't even argue with that. Go. Yeah, he wants to go, you know, help his son in the three-legged race they have going on. I'm oh. saying, you're like, oh. I get it. Okay, I'm not mad at you. But episode 29, we end up getting introduced to someone who tries to be so serious in this show. BRB Master. Hmm. This guy is hilarious because of the fact that he's such an antithesis to everybody else. Yeah. He tries to be so serious and so cool, and everybody's just like, you don't know what you're so here to do. You? <laughs> but he ends up sending the Car Ranger through... I think you're on the wrong set, sir. Yeah. I think you're on that <laughs> I one. think you want to go one season four. <laughs> but he ends up uh, you know, bringing uh, the Car Rangers a whole bunch of training and everything they end up having to go through. There's this whole thing where later on we find out that he's Dap's father. Hmm. Speaking of which, Dap this entire time, like, after a little bit, he ends up changing his clothes, so he ends up wearing a Michael Jordan jersey. Oh, my God. <laughs> when he started wearing that, I could not believe what I was watching. I it mean, looks so dated. It, I mean, it does, but I'm just like, uh, I guess. It, it's, 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 it's the time. So we're just going to Yeah, it it's the it time, but it was like, oh, my God, when did mid-90s America throw up on you? <laughs> it's that awful. Moment. At that um, particular moment. But... Episode 29 to 31 is like sort of the end of the Rich Hiker arc. We're going to call it that, put in quotations. Uh, because he ends up getting like all the evil of like in the universe is getting put into him at one time. So he ends up becoming Professor Richie Rich Hiker. He gets an extra rich. He's richer now. He's now Professor Richie Rich. <laughs> <laughs> but this is also when we end up getting introduced to the VRV Robo. It's like I said, this is the last one from Kaku, O, and uh. Car Ranger, where they end up getting their own individual mechs. I don't mind individual mechs. Eh, I kind of do. Uh, I mean, they're not bad on their own, but the helmets are a little bit weird in their own way. Mm. If only because they're still the profession that they are. So police, you know, has a helmet, and a bulldozer has a, you know, construction, construction hat. hat. Yeah, and all of that. And just, just like, but I mean, it it's not the worst. I, I think, well, my, I like it as the giant you know the, yes as the combined the vrv robot yes. looks great it looks great but individually it looks like an it looks like it was an afterthought <laughs> yeah it really probably because it was they're like oh shit uh we forgot to do this part uh just individual it, you, know, <laughs> you know what it looks like it looks like transformers mcdonald's toys yes <laughs> that's accurate <laughs> just that kind of lazy very accurate that kind of lazy um now, for this entire time, I will mention this in episode 33. This is the episode where he wakes up, but the car rangers are having some issue with some monster, and they're like, they've been trying to throw a party for Dap the entire time mm. to like have his uh, waking up party. I love this one scene where he's like, he's in a whole bunch of costumes throughout the episode because he doesn't want the car rangers to figure out that he's awake yeah. and like spoil the party and everything. So he comes up to them, like, after telling them how to beat the monster and everything, like, some. He uh, <laughs> he comes up to him in like some terrible wig. Uh -huh. He's looking like Josuke <laughs> or Gintaro, and uh, he like has a pink guitar and everything. He's just, like playing it and everything. He's like, "Yeah, baby, this is how you beat the monster." He's like, "Oh, thanks, man." And then uh, the car just run off. And they're like, "That was Dap in the costume, wasn't it?" Yeah, I guess he woke up. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> they were just like, huh. And they just keep on going. Well, fancy last. that. <laughs> I just love it. Oh my God. It's like one of the funniest things just because it's so stupid and just hilariously yeah. well done. Um, episode 35, we even getting introduced to an actual villain. Because the other guys just because they don't around. fucking count. Yeah. Let's be real, they do not fucking count. Uh, ex- his name is Exhaust because everything has to be card themed. Yep, and he, as the card ranges are from the good card constellation, that he's from the bad card constellation, <gasps> where he just wants to build oh like my. an intergalactic biker highway or something, and he has to. They're calling it a freeway. <laughs> he has to blow up Earth because it's in the way. <laughs> so, so Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yeah. Basically. That's literally Hitchhiker's Guide. <laughs> but um but what Earth is in the way of a freeway, so they have to blow it up. <laughs> but unfortunately his minions are biker gang, so nothing ever works. <laughs> so, but I mean he has a plan, he keeps trying to do it. We'll mention this now because it ends up becoming a thing later on. Um the good card constellations that the Carver is in getting their powers from have guardian constellations. Mm. I mention that now because it's a thing at the end of the show. Uh, <clears throat> he ends up bringing in this mech that he ends up getting from an intergalactic uh, shopping guide. <laughs> you said guy or god? Guide. Oh, guide. Okay, I heard god. Uh, Kami-sama. And it's something that almost is a beat in the Car Rangers, but unfortunately, once again, this is still Biker Gang. So before they get into dealing with the final blow to it, uh, there is a screw loose because somebody forgot to put it in. <laughs> and so it, the arm just breaks off. It's this thing. kind of attention to detail that makes me love this show. Yeah. It is. That, that is pretty fucking great. It's like, because it's that thing that some people, that you even happen in real life. You're like, so what are all these extra screws for? And you just go, oh shit. <laughs> I guess these are extra. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it almost ends up beating them. And the reason that it almost ends up beating them is because of the fact that they... They end up doing this in the show. They get too overconfident. Oh, yeah. Mm. Uh, so they're like, they, you know, these guys are idiots. They can't really do anything against us. And that ends up becoming a problem in itself because then they almost end up getting beaten. <laughs> mm. Now, one of the mention is now, the team up between the Car Rangers and the Over Ranger take place between episode 38 and 30, uh, 45. So we'll go ahead and talk about that. The main problem is the O Rangers. Besides that. Yeah. <laughs> What year did O Ranger take place in? Ninety four. No, ninety two. Ninety nine. What? Oh, you mean in show? Yes. Oh, right. Oh, the O Ranger take place in nineteen ninety nine. This show knows what year it is. Uh-oh. It's nineteen ninety six in this show. So why are they there? How? But we don't. Know. <laughs> we don't know, and by this point, we don't care. No, yeah, but I don't, I'm, I'm serious. When the Yone Rangers first showed up, I forgot who they were. <laughs> the only one I even recognized was the leader. They and showed up. I was like, "Wait, you guys are what? Are, oh, you're the O Rangers. Oh, yeah. right. I forgot that your show was terrible." Uh, there ends up being some pretty hilarious. Singing. We, we learned, we learned that Signal Man has a lovely singing voice. Yes. And very, very good singing. Such a powerful singer with the power to make uh, cars weep. And fly home. Yes. Despite the fact that the sky isn't his jurisdiction. Yes. He was willing to let it slide this yes. one time, I guess. And basically, the entire conflict between the Overeners and the Car Rangers starts because Kiyosuke is an idiot. Mm. <laughs> and he thinks that the one that the Car Rangers are, uh, you know, chasing are is a good guy. He thinks he's the not. monster that he found in the hot spring is a good guy. Yeah, he's not. They end up figuring he is figuring that out later. He like pulls over the car and be like, get out. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then he gets in trouble <laughs> with uh U uh UAOH's uh, commander, V three, and he was like, if you don't <laughs> If you don't end up because the commander of O Ranger is getting captured, I love it in one scene because, um, bef- like they end up the way that they end up making the cars fly is by injecting it with like a gasoline, yeah. And they end up getting like a souped up version of that later that they end up putting in O Red's bike. And like they, they, he puts it into the bike and it starts to fly away. And O Green starts to sing the song, and before he can do anything, the bike just goes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, we didn't even get enough time this time. Man. Oh dear, <laughs> you're no signal man. <laughs> I love it. So they end up having like this whole training montage scene, 
which is honestly hilarious mm. because it's full of bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> it's this show. This show is nothing but full of bullshit. It's like the commander is putting them through this whole scene and there's just like everybody ends up yeah. doing it first before uh, Red Racer. Mm-hmm. And it's hilarious because... He makes them what, like crawl up a hill? And Pink like... ends up winning that one because of the fact there's a whole bunch of spiders and she's like, yeah, oh, she's hell like, no. Yeah, oh, spiders. It's basically you. That's yeah. what you would do if that's she's like, hell you. no. You just get up and run. She runs up the hill. Uh, Green ends up doing it by complete bullshit. He was like, I now understand the meaning of life. <laughs> yeah. He was like, good, you pass. And then uh, Yellow, when they're having to crawl under the barbed wire, mm-hmm. Yellow ends up doing it. Uh, they end up going into a waterfall, and that's how Blue wins. Mm-hmm. And Red's like, the hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> and then what just, the frick? There's this whole scene where he ends up getting like, super motivated, and he ends up having to run through. He, like, he was going to have to climb the wall the first time, but he gets super motivated and just runs through the wall. <laughs> and that's how they also end up getting O Red back in the, uh, during the end of this, yeah. where he runs through. A, like you hear him yelling, and back ah! he's like, "What the hell is that?" And he just runs through. A wall. <laughs> oh my god, I love this team. Uh, it's it's complete and utter mess. Uh, it's also the first time that we end up getting the actual mechs fighting mm-hmm. together mm-hmm. at the end of this because they did not do that in the uh, uh, O Ranger versus Kaga Ranger. That was a movie they had bigger budget for this one, I guess. Yeah, it's true. Um. Now, we'll go ahead and skip on to episode 30, 45, uh, because this is the episode that Zanette ends up going onto the side of good, and also because of the fact that Exhaust is attacking her whole planet. Radiata comes back and is just like, we need your help. And Zanette's like, oh, fine. <laughs> <laughs> just like that. Basically. Um, and she ends up leaving for a little bit to go and help her home planet. It's a pretty great scene because it's, you know, it's the end of Zanette's arc, and she and Red Racer finally start to... We'll put this on quotation marks. End up having to have their thing. Mm. Um, episode 47 and 48, the last few episodes of this show, uh, the Car Rangers end up losing their powers because the Guardian constellations that I mentioned earlier, there's also a red wine constellation and it spills and the Guardian constellations get drunk. So Exhaust is taking their powers. <laughs> That's how that goes. And then. Would it have gone down any other way? Yes, and then they end up uh, going given up. into the biker gang. We'll call it a planet, but it's more like a spaceship. It's not that big. Mm. They crash. That's in- no moon. Yeah, Damn it. <laughs> they end up trying to fight their. Um, they end up trying to fight biker gang. They can't really do it. Uh, Zanette ends up coming back, and she's like, "You must fight with the Car Rangers." And they're like, "What?" And she's like, "Oh." Damn it! Fight with them, <laughs> <laughs> and then they end up fighting together. After uh, the Carmen is end up taking the uh, the biker gang planet and then smashing it into exhaust and then getting the powers back. Here's where thing gets a little bit weird. Because oh, this is where this shit is gets where weird. It's no, okay. it's because it's inconsistent within itself. Because the VRV robot is getting badly damaged, they mm. end up throwing it on the exhaust. It blows up, and then they end up getting the RV robo and. Uh, there was the way that the monsters end up growing throughout this entire season where they basically end up having to eat oh my gosh uh, like, that's one of my favorite things about this show it's like potato jelly yeah it's like but some, some some sort of Japanese dessert yeah and like that's how they end up growing throughout the rest of the show then they end up throwing because the last batch that they end up having the last batch is stale oh <laughs> so when Dynamo ends up eating it his stomach starts to mess up and he gets smaller <laughs> And so the way that they end up beating Exhaust at the very end is that Gynamo ends up taking the stale one and throws it into his mouth and he starts having a whole bunch of stomach issues and he gets smaller. And that's how the Car Ranger ends up beating him. Mm. And the weird, like I said, the weird thing is because of the fact that VRV Robo ends up coming back at the end of the show, we just saw it blow up. And it's just standing behind them. And then everybody goes in their own merry way. The biker gang ends up going around the earth. Like, I think Dynamo ends up becoming some guy at a restaurant. Uh, some of the other biker gang members end up becoming, um, like, a traveling troop or something. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Zelmoda and Grouch end up going back to elementary school. Yay. Yay. Finish your education, folks. Yes. Don't quit school. But, I mean, that that's, like, the only inconsistent thing, really, at the end of this show. But I really like this show. Me too. This show is so much fun. 
Like, I just enjoyed watching the entire thing. I cried laughing on a few episodes. That whole thing, when they said it was like, huh, I guess he woke up then. I had to pause the video because I just wasn't ready for it. I was like, you can't break that much of a trope. <laughs> they just did it. Good stuff. It's great. Let's get on to these characters. Kiyosuke. He tries. He's so really, fucking hard. He's really lazy. Yeah. Like, extremely lazy. He loves to go to sleep. Yep. But he's like the, uh, he's the test driver for all the cars that he's in the fixing at the uh, right. Pegasus automobile shop. And, like, there's this whole thing after, um, after the VRV Rebel ends up getting introduced, <laughs> where he ends up getting into this, his mind after VRV Master tells him, like, you have to be the leader for this team. There's this whole episode where he tries to be the leader so hard. He's uh-huh. so overzealous with it. He's like, everybody else is fighting. And I think uh, Pink was over there fighting uh, some of the uh, Wumpers. That's the uh, minions of the season. They're, she's over there fighting them. He's like, Pink Razor! And he just goes up and starts beating up all the Wumpers. Pink Razor! And, and she was like, you know, I had that. He's like, ha-ha! <laughs> no way! He just goes off. like He's so overzealous. I mean, yeah. he really tries, but... His character is very honest, yes. and I like that. It's just like he's a hilarious, hilarious person. I think he's one of my favorite, just like Reds, because of the fact that he just—he's so normal. <laughs> he's like extremely normal. He's not too loud. He's not too monotone. He's—he's he's a normal dude. Yes, he—he he gets punched in the face so often. Yeah, just by everyone. I mean, especially Pink. He gets yeah. just hit by her like all the time. It's great. He's—he's. He's, just, he's a great character. Yes. I thought he was, Kiyosuke was, he's hilarious. I love seeing him come back and go Kaiser as well. And still be the yes. same damn person. Yeah. I love I love how he breaks the fourth wall during his hero shift. Yes. It shows up, his pretty form shows up in front of him, and he's like, <laughs> swats it out of the way. <laughs> I still remember that uh, there was this whole other scene where, he, like, I think it was in the same leader episode, when he's like going off and fighting the monster base by himself and just destroys it. And when he's doing his pose and everything, he just keeps spinning. The yeah. entire time. <laughs> and then at the end, he makes the go kai just put on a traffic safety. Thing. Yes, it's great. Uh, Naoki, blue. Mm. He's the least interesting of everybody. He's mm. very polite and he's very proper in his speech patterns. Um, but I mean, he's just really not that interesting he's not bad mm-hmm. uh, because he doesn't have in some moments... I, I would say to say it's not none of the characters in this show are bad yeah it's just like he's they're just, all likable in some way he's just like one of the he's the l- lower tier lower end of the spectrum on this one mm. uh there's a <laughs> i remember there's this one scene i think it's a, uh, the time when radietta and zonet are you know they're coming back and i think it was at the end of the episode where uh zonet and red racer end up like having a notebook that they pass back and forth mm-hmm. yeah. And and Zonda just straight up rejects him, and Red Race is standing there like this. And, <laughs> and Yellow is like, oh, look at all the sewing I have to go do. And Green's like, I'm going to go join her. And Pink's like, I had to go do some shopping. And Blue's like, I have nothing. I just don't want to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I help you, but I don't want to. <laughs> yeah. He, like, he has moments when he, pl- he plays yeah. off of other people very well. Mm-hmm. But it's like when the episode focuses on him, it's not that good. It's sort yeah. of boring. Mm-hmm. Um, Mino Green, he's my favorite. No, I can do. He, he cool. like he doesn't overact. Everything feels so <laughs> realistic. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Everything feels so realistic with him. It's like he like his actor portrays his character very very yes. well. He like all the facial expressions that he ends the up doing. He's kind of a goofball, but yeah, yeah. But it's like. It worked. Uh, he really, really works for this show. He's yes. hilarious, just because of the fact that he plays off of everybody else so well. Like, just anytime there was an episode focused on him, you knew it was going to be great, just because of the fact that he's really good. Like, there was this one episode where um, he ends up befriending one of the monsters, but the monsters end up tricking him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like at the end of the episode, he played dramatic very well because like he and the monster got along so well. They they're like both really like his hometown baseball team. Yeah. Um, and like he's over there singing the song and like everybody else standing in the background, he's like walking off, he starts crying and everything, but they can't see it. And I'm sitting here like, Okay, I get it. I understand exactly where this actor is coming from. Also, he ends up doing one thing in that same episode where both of the um mechs are really, really damaged except certain pieces. So he ends up bringing the other parts of the mechs together to make another mech. Mm-hmm. Just for like the scrambled pieces of that one. This is the first time this happens. 
And because of this, this is where we start getting like the arms changes, mm -hmm. like in, especially when Gowrings are on. Yeah. It's really because of that Robo. This is the first time they ever doing something like that. And it's really just thanks to him and his hilarity and quick thinking. Um, yellow, Natsumi. She's the straight woman. I liked her a lot. Yeah. She, she was pretty funny. Um, she's like the most serious out of everybody else there. Mm -hmm. But she plays her part extremely, extremely well. I just love that. I thought she was hilariously, just hilariously funny. Um, I, I really wish she did a little bit more with her. Mm -hmm. But I mean, that's something that'll usually fall me by the wayside every single time. Ah, uh, Yoko, pink. She's the more girly of the two. She is the girly. She girl. worries about her weight. Yes. My absolute favorite moment with her <laughs> is at the very end of the last episode. She's sitting at her desk. She's working. She looks around, pulls out two pieces of cake, and just goes. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> I remember this whole episode where she... That was so funny. ...was like, some guy is about to propose to me. And she was like, I'm going to go ahead and quit the car. And just now, bye! <laughs> <laughs> just like, what? Well, this, you're a lot of help. During a Christmas episode, she sort of ends up showing how terrible she is. She's like, I'm going to get everybody a present just so they can get me one. I'm going to get them all a really cheap one and they can get me something better. <laughs> just like, I, okay. I... Yeah. <laughs> Signal man. I think we've said enough on Signal yeah, Man he, at this point. What else is there to say? He's just a great character. He is an idiot, but he's, he's a not... total doofus. He he steals the scene whenever he's yeah. there. He's he's just so good. He ends up placing his base in a lot of places where he thinks traffic will be, but nothing. But happens. but there is nothing. <laughs> he placed he it was J before J. He placed it in the middle of a forest on a sidewalk <laughs> up a mountain. <laughs> it's like I, I guess mm. you could do that, but he, he was still really. Really funny. I, I enjoyed Sigma Man. I would love to have a scene where a guy is like trying to hurt sheep or something down a mountain, and he's like, "Ah, <laughs> can't do that here. <laughs> Not have my permission." Dap, Dap is great. Yeah, he Dap might be troll Yoda. He might be like my favorite mentor character because he's he's still really? young, but he's just such an asshole with yeah. it. He's really funny in the things that he ends up being able to do just throughout the rest of the show. Um, I enjoyed him a lot more than I thought I was because when I first saw him, he reminded me of that dinosaur show from back in the 90s. <laughs> Sinclair! Funny. Yeah. But it's like he was really funny and just he always was there to help the Car Rangers, but sometimes he did it in such an asshole -ish way mm. that it just makes him that much funnier. Like and, putting on a wig and a pink guitar? Yes. <laughs> like episode 33 will just end up being one of my favorite just like Sentai episodes overall because of that scene. Mm. <laughs> it's just like that was that. <laughs> Guess he's awake. Oh well. But yeah, oh, well. this show was not great. the mama. I love Car Ranger. It's I mean it's it's not my favorite, of mm. course, but it's it's good to watch just because yeah, of how you, funny. Especially if you want to if you if want to laugh, laugh, definitely give this yeah. show a watch. Genki Soul Sentai Car Ranger was just something that was really really worth it. I'm ha I happy. I happy. I'm happy we're watching it. I happy after Amazon's. Well, well, before Amazon's, because we need that moment before we end up going to that. Speaking of which, we're doing Come Around Amazon's next. We're going to review the whole show. Yes. Uh, all of season one this time. But we're going to review Superhero Tyson. Oh, yeah. I thought we were doing Superhero Tyson first. That's after Mega Ranger. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Back full circle for you, isn't it? <laughs> but yeah, it's just like, after O-Ranger, I feel like this is a much better follow-up. Because yeah. they were just like, oh, Ranger was a mess, and then we just have to go like full Monty on this one, and they did. And I really, really like Car Ranger. I thought it was hilarious. Everybody in this show was worth it. Um, but yeah, that is just a great show. It is. You know what we have to do now? Hmm. We have to compare it to a terrible show. Join us next time. Join us next for a comparison episode three. X five. Where we compare it to Power Rangers Turbo, the and, show that almost got Power Rangers canceled. And join us in two weeks for Kamen Rider Amazon as a full first season review. But this has been the Toku Cast review. Thank you guys so much for joining us as usual. Welcome to 2017. We hope it's fucking a lot better than 2016. We'll see you guys next time. Bye, everybody. Bye.